Hello and welcome. We're sorry for the delay. We had some trouble with the sound just now. For those of you watching there, we've started this live streaming. So you're watching China Global Television Network and not Tibetan Television. Although we are located right now at a Tibetan county called Li Tang, it's also known as City in the Sky because it is situated more than 4,000 meters above sea level. It's one of the highest towns in the world. So, excuse me, I'm getting a little bit of altitude sickness right now. If you take a look at the surroundings behind me, we can see very traditional Tibetan style folk houses. And behind me right now is called Li Tang Tibetan Opera Mini Museum. It's actually quite amazing that in this small town of Li Tang, uh, located in southwest China's Sichuan province, on the eastern edge of the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, there are eight traditional museums. Uh, eight or ten, two more museums are being built. So altogether, ten mini museums in this small town of Li Tang. And of course, we're standing outside of the Tibetan Opera Museum today, and that's what we're going to bring you today. So if you just walk with me up to enter this museum right now, we can see very colorful Tibetan painting of uh, uh, Tibetan opera uh, masks and costume on this doorway. And this is all painted by hand. So if we just open the door and walk inside of the premises, we're seeing a visitor here. Um, because a local, very renowned uh, horse racing festival is being held here in Li Tang. The annual horse racing festival uh, draws audience from all over China, even outside of China. And uh, we're seeing photos of Tibetan opera characters on this wall right here. Very colorful costume, very uh, unique facial masks. So if we just enter the premises here, my guest today is waiting for me right here. So this is, um, it's quite dark right now, but mm -hmm. uh, so let's wait for one moment for our camera to adjust to the darkness inside. But this is Billy Ye. Nice uh, to meet you everyone. <laughs> and I was pretty lucky to have bumped into Billy uh, yesterday at the Horse Racing Festival. Why don't you tell us who you are and what you do? Hello everyone, I'm Billy. I'm a local TV station English anchor and it's a great pleasure to introduce the local culture, especially the Tibetan opera to you. So, get so back Billy, to let's our... take a look at the stage right here. It's not a stage per se, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's just a wooden house with a very small floor. <laughs> it is a Tibetan opera house typically this small? Mm. Uh, actually, this is a rehearsing house um, okay. because the Tibetan opera was originally uh, in lower classes. They often perform at open ground for this peasant. Uh, however, they need a place to rehearse um, and uh, they need a lot of time to rehearse because uh, usually a performance could last uh, two to three days and eight hours per day no. in order. Wait, eight hours a day for several days. You're kidding me. Uh -huh. That's quite yeah. hard for the actors. I mean, how, how, do, they, how do they last for that long? Um, well, of course, through persistent uh, rehearsing and the practice. So that's why they need a, a very good rehearsing house. But uh, what you gonna to see over here is not uh, the actual stage. Mm -hmm. The stage is uh, among the people, with the people, like an uh, open ground in the feet. Okay, so it's a type of grassroot folk art. Folk art. Folk art. Folk art. Folk art. Right. And I believe, if I'm correct, in Tibetan it's called Lamo. Yeah, it's a Lamo very Duma. Lamo Duma. Okay, and it's a very traditional, century-old art form featuring Tibetan music and dance, which can be compared to the Western art form of opera, probably. Uh, older than that. Older <laughs> than that, of course, of course. Yeah. And what we're about to see today, of course, since we're here, we're going to bring you a spectacular show called Sukinima, which is one of the a most traditional Tibetan opera uh, performances in the Tibetan in the Lamo repertoire, right? Yep. And I believe our audience right now are getting some last minute preparations in the makeup room. So Billy, if you can show me inside to meet some of the characters. OK, OK. Well, uh, welcome to the backstage. Wow. Uh, 
this is the backstage. This is the makeup room for the Tibetan opera, the, the actors of Lamo. And we're seeing right now, they're getting some last minute preparations for the show that we just uh, talked about called Suki Nima. Suki Nima, of course, in Tibetan means as radiant as the sun. Um, like we said before, it's one of the most, eight most traditional uh, Lamo performances in the Tibetan opera repertoire. So if we just, oh, this is, absolutely spectacular billy tell us what we're seeing right now okay, um, what right here you are seeing our king in our performance and uh, uh, he's um, putting on a very a very stylish mustache and that, that's how the traditional royalty look like right. uh, at the same time come here uh, a very contradictory makeup <laughs> this is our <laughs> uh, hunter in the woods because traditionally, uh, Tibetan has a very long slavery period, mm -hmm. and uh, the Tibet uh, and uh, those lower class, such as hunters, they do not um, have anything to shave their uh, mustache, uh, and uh, that's why uh, is uh, the makeup is totally different. Wow! And and Billy, just talk to me about the actors here we're seeing because. If I understand correctly, all of them are local Tibetans, and they have very limited Mandarin. Yes, uh, actually, um, well, um, let's look at that. This is actually a boy, <laughs> a man uh -huh. who are making up uh, as a <laughs> female. As a girl, as a girl. Uh, actually, a wizard, witch. A, a witch. <laughs> yeah, a witch, an evil lady in our play. And uh, uh, I have to be uh, speaking more about uh, their personal stories. Um, before our government poverty alleviation policies, mm. um, they don't have a um, sustainable income. They don't sell tickets. They don't uh, sell anything during a performance. All they do is just the perform, and uh, the peasant audience um, just uh, throw the money on their performance stage, and uh, that's all their income. So uh, they cannot do this. Uh, I mean, consistently through the whole year, mm -hmm. only during the summertime. Mm -hmm. So. Everybody have their own job. Some of them are security guards, some of them are truck, truck drivers, mm -hmm. but they have been consistently practicing the legendary uh, art of uh, performance. Most of them have more than five years experience of uh, performance. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of them, I think most of them who are capable of uh, perform ladies are practiced uh, are start perform uh, start practice uh, at a very young age some of them is six some of them is eight so they can have the voice very high vocal like a lady mm. okay so you actually brought up a quite interesting point because you told me earlier that all the female characters in Tibetan opera in Lamo are actually played by male actors is that so yeah, it is indeed uh, because uh, um, the start or the creation of uh, Lamo, the Tibetan opera, um, the legendary goes like this. There is a monk who's very kind, but very poor. Mm -hmm. So he wants to build a bridge across the river, uh, but he don't have the money. What he gonna do? Like most monk do, he ask for donations. Right. Um, but. Uh, there was uh, nobody except him come to the play. So he prayed to the snow mountain god. And the god sent uh, seven beautiful female goddess come down to help him build the bridge. Uh, after they finished the job, of course, they are goddess and they go back to heavens. But the monk keep the going. Mm. Since he's a monk, he can uh, all other uh, crew members are monks, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, since the story originally included the female characters, so all the story have male monk to play female, even till now. Mm -hmm. Well, however, everything have uh, exceptions. Across a thousand years of history, there are only one female character who, uh, one female who ever played uh, um, in the Lama uh, performance. Actually, she started a new way of uh, performance and the sort of storytelling mm -hmm. because he, she contributed so much to this form of art that even the oldest uh, performer respected her. So she became the only female character 
uh, played in the Lama or Tibetan drama. Wow, oh, that's very interesting, Billy. Thank you for the background. And uh, it's actually quite hard for me to communicate with the actors here because, like we said, they have very limited Mandarin. And uh, Billy, if I understand correctly, that most of the actors here um, haven't had much formal education, right? Uh, well, uh, yes, now even though we are 2020 is uh, the 21st century, however, in Tibet, because we have a vast land of grass, there are many husbandries, and uh, unfortunately, some families, even they, uh, enjoy the nine years compulsory education free but they still don't have the time to let the children go because they're too busy with uh, their uh, cows, sheep, horse, and they're so far away in the vast <laughs> grassland. Nobody L monitored them. Living a nomadic lifestyle too, probably. Yeah, but that's probably not so good for the children's, uh, I mean, future. Mm. Uh, you cannot be a, uh, I mean, cow man or horse man for your lifetime without any skill so in this uh, day and age of yeah course. yeah well um, so uh, unfortunately it's about 20% uh, of the children didn't finish their uh, compulsory education still to this day still to this day uh, however uh, I mean uh, we can look at uh, here I mean, uh, look at this uh, uh, comparatively beautiful one. If you like this one, we can introduce this too. No, <laughs> okay. That, 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 no, that one looks evil. That one looks like a demon. It is. It, it's quite scary. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's actually made by children. Uh, this one is made by children. And uh, there's a story. Very wow. sad one. Well, okay, tell us the story. Okay. Very the, briefly. Yeah, very briefly. Uh, because, uh, <clears throat> just as I said, uh, those kids uh, uh, who have don't have the opportunity to take uh, nice compulsory education, um, they are not able to feed themselves um, on the society. So what the government do, uh, what the government do, the government made uh, 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 yeah, they made uh, programs, uh, poverty alleviation okay, programs. Progr education programs, training programs. Training programs to uh, alleviate them from poverty. So uh, that, like this kind of uh, traditional mask is uh, one kind of uh, traditional art craft. Uh, so um, the kids are enrolled uh, in this kind of training school to practice how to make masks. The government uh, provide them free accommodation, free food, and a free tuition for one year. Uh, teach them uh, how to make the clothes, customs, and uh, the masks. Wow. Uh, and uh, uh, they also, so um, that's, uh, um, even though they don't, uh, I mean, finish their nice compulsory education, they still have the ability to make a living by uh, carry on their uh, cultural heritage um, legendaries. Right. And uh, there's just so much more to talk about in this tiny makeup room right now, but I think we do want to get to the stage very quickly too. But let me just uh, briefly introduce these masks. So different colors actually uh, represents different characters. The blue ones, I was just told by the head of this troupe, uh, represents anger or indignation. And we're seeing yellow ones right here. Which, no, you don't have to hide from the camera. <laughs> They're quite shy. You're going to go on stage anyway. Um, and, the, and the yellow ones that we're seeing right here actually represent wisdom. So, yes, like I said, Billy, so much I wanted to talk about, but we're running out of time. So why don't we go out to the stage and ask the characters, ask the actors if they're ready for the show. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> And Tibetan people are ho so hospitable. Yeah. They're, they're so warm and kind, too. <laughs> okay, so this would be... Thank you. This would be our stage right here. And while our characters get ready for hitting the stage, of course, let's talk about, about, let's talk about, about this uh, rehearsal room. You told me just now that the actual stage should be out in the open out in the grasslands. But talk to us about this rehearsal room. It's so beautiful, adorned by various kinds of mm -hmm. Tibetan elements. Talk yeah. to me about this room. Um, okay, uh, this uh, um, Lamo, we all see Tibetan opera rehearsal room mm -hmm. um, because, the uh, because the drama actually originated from temple. So in actual temple is 
four times bigger than this. Uh, now things we have this uh, museum, so it's uh, much smaller. However, the structure is uh, still the same. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the open floor, of course, is their practice in place. And uh, uh, that part is the um, audience seat. And uh, like uh, every afternoon, there are audience, uh, local patients come here to watch them. Because this is a grassroots performance. Uh, traditionally, nobody pays anything. Mm. So if they feel like it, they just uh, they don't a small donation onto the stage. Yeah, uh, what's the donation? They don't even have money. So they oh. <laughs> threw the yak meat, oh, <laughs> dry okay. yak meat or something uh, uh, that. Well, there is uh, uh, some place to collect it. And uh, on the second floor, usually is by uh, um, the <clears throat> new members who are uh, uh, the, uh, the students who want to uh, learn about uh, this uh, performance, who are on the second floor, or the masters who are overseeing the whole performance. Because traditionally, um, the rehearsal room is in monastery. So, in monastery? Yeah, in monasteries. So uh, that is why the second floor is uh, always uh, belong to the staff. Mm. Sometimes if they are royal family come to uh, witness show, they will pick up a, a, a special seat over there. Or some people with a disease who are not, uh, I mean, comfortable uh, within too much crowd, they also offer special rooms. Okay, and just talk to me about the beautiful adornments, the paintings here that we're seeing right now. Let's first go to the pillars. Okay. Because I'm realizing that this is probably all hand-painted. Yeah, uh, actually, what you see, it is uh, exactly beautiful and lovely, but it's just a, a piece of uh, ice mountain. <laughs> and uh, they don't even call it a local You mean the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> the tip of the iceberg. The tip of the Sorry iceberg. That. That okay. This is actually already quite amazing for me. Yeah, but, but for this... them, they are, that's nothing. They don't even call it painting. Okay. Yeah, okay. And, and, and when was this done, do we know? Uh, because the house was built uh, like uh, in 2018. 2018, that's two years ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was just saying at the top of the show that what, it, what quite impressed me was that in this small county of Litang, there are actually 10 museums, I was yeah. told yesterday. Yeah. And, and, and tell us, what do these museums feature? Because mm -hmm. it's actually quite impressive to have 10 museums in a small county of how many people? Um, 70,000. That's absolutely amazing. <laughs> yes. And then 59 <laughs> other museums. Okay, well, the first one, since you are watching uh, the travelogue or Casual Express, <laughs> this is uh, uh, the first one is uh, uh, Traveler, Traveler Museum. Mm -hmm. Actually, they Traveler's have. Museum. Traveler's Museum. Traveler's mm -hmm. Museum. They have uh, uh, historical relics of uh, the first the German, actually they are Nazis, who come to Tibet, who are actually major human skeleton. Well, you can't even imagine that. Well, I was very impressed. What's the German dude doing over here? Mm -hmm. They are Nazis. They are actually, uh, I mean, major of the Tibetan people uh, skeleton, I mean, schools to to, I mean, calculate whether they are perfect, whether they are sh superior species or not. <laughs> this, this actually brings up a very interesting point oh, yeah. of the Kampa Tibetans. Oh. Because uh, Litang County is one of the uh, Kampa Tibetan regions. It's, mm -hmm. it's not on Tibet proper. It's on the eastern edge of the Qinghai Tibet Plateau. We said that at the top of the show. And the, the Tibetan people in this region are known as the Kampa Tibetans. And, and what are some of their characteristics? They're known for their high cheekbones. Mm. They don't look like Chinese, right? Yep. They have high cheekbones, high nose bridge. They have very um, defined jawline. Mm -hmm. They're known to be fierce and brave. Mm -hmm. They're known to be warriors, great mm -hmm. horse riders, right? We said at the top of the show too, that uh, an annual horse racing festival is being mm -hmm. held here. And what are some of the other characteristics for Kampa Tibetans? They're tall, they're mm -hmm. well built. Mm -hmm. You're obviously, I should probably point that out. You're not <laughs> Tibetan. You're not, <laughs> certainly not Kampa Tibetan. <laughs> what, what's your background, Billy? Well, uh, yes, I'm not Kampa Tibetan, but <laughs> I'm Chinese, uh, right? You're from Sichuan. <laughs> He's yeah. from this province. Yeah, I'm from uh, this province. Actually, uh, as we all know, uh, they are 
46 different uh, minorities of uh, Chinese people mm -hmm. actually uh, come participating. Actually, um, the Tibetan people, they are originally from Xiangxiong Wenming, uh, which is at uh, the... Xiangxiong civilization. Xiangxiong civilization. Okay, Chinese. Xiangxiong <laughs> <laughs> civilization, sorry for that. And uh, that is, uh, uh, and the Xiangxiong uh, is uh, the birthplace actually located in Ali district of Tibetan, mm -hmm. and uh, that's uh, very close to the Middle East. And uh, some of uh, these uh, people actually uh, uh, have some. Um, uh, uh, have some DNA or, uh, or um, uh, offsprings of uh, uh, foreign, uh, foreign, um, uh, foreign minorities. Mm -hmm. So uh, exactly because I'm not a, a human revolution specialist, uh, I um, don't know much about uh, the human structure of uh, 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 Kampa uh, Tibet. Kampa Tibet. But one very important thing about the culture, uh, Tibetan have. Uh, Historically, have uh, three main strong tribals, right. and the uh, Kamba is famous for its uh, soldier and man. We see endings horse, Kamba's man. So, just uh, um, the history have gone on for centuries, and uh, here, right here in this town, uh, they have those the most uh, uh, spectacular, uh, spectacular Kamba, um, Kamba man. Uh, modeling selection. Uh, it has been going on for 20 years and, and uh, here tonight is the final season. <laughs> and of course we're gonna go live for that event too but let's just go and see if the actors are ready to hit the stage. Definitely. Okay. Uh, Tuan Zhang, this is the head of the troupe. Uh, I want to ask you if you can prepare for Are the actors ready? Yes. Uh, the the is actually telling me that the actors are ready to hit the stage.
Amazing. Can we just have the actors sit over there and uh, have the head of the... Yes, yes, please take a rest. I can see that that's, that's quite difficult for, for the body, but uh, we have the head of this uh, Tibetan opera troupe with us right now. M Mr. K Sir? Sir, can you introduce yourself for us? Can you give us a self-introduction, including the group? Yes, it's still. It's still Zhaxi Xiu Ba. What's the name of the troupe? Zhaxi Xiu Ba. Zhaxi Xiu Ba? That's the name of this troupe. What's your name? What's your name? My name is Luo Zhong Ding Ba. Luo Zhong Ding Ba. Luo Zhong Ding Ba, teacher. Thank you for bringing us to this. This is exclusively for the purposes of today's live stream. So it's yeah. quite a rare opportunity for us too. It doesn't feel like working for me. It just feels like sitting back and enjoy the show and talking to some um, people that I've never met before. But can you just tell us what what was it that we just saw right now? Help us make sense of it. Yellow masks. Um, Billy, can you help us make sense of the performance that we just saw right now? Okay. Uh, first, I want to uh, mm, correct a uh, uh, small thing. Uh, their uh, group is called Jia uh, Wa Zhang Xi Tuan. Now it's Li Tang Zhang Xi Tuan, right? Okay. Uh, so they are actually Li Tang County. Uh, Lama, Lama troop. troop. Right, that's the name. Because, like I said, it's very difficult for me to communicate. <laughs> so, that's why I'm here. Yes, <laughs> it's great to have you here. Okay, and uh, uh, this is Li Tang, one of the highest county in the world. It's uh, more than 5,000 kilometers. Why I have to emphasize this? Because the actors, everybody you have to see, have to wear these masks. And uh, this mask is not is made totally by hand. It's tradition, <clears throat> and uh, where once you wear it, even on plan ground, it's hard to breathe. Okay, right. <laughs> because you don't really have uh, the the mouth open for you to breathe, and uh, the erotic and uh, gorgeous performance you have just to see take super lots of energy you have to breathe in lots of air oxygen to generate that kind of power and passion with this kind of mask is very hard with uh, the highest at the highest county higher than 
4,000 meters is very, very hot. So, and can, I'm just noticing the back of this mask is already soaking wet. Yeah. <laughs> With the sweat of the actors, and we're seeing the name of the troop, the, ori the original name of the troop, right? Yeah. Called Jawa. Yeah, right, right. Jawa <laughs> Lama Troop, yeah, Tibetan yeah, Opera Troop. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. And it's soaking wet with the sweat of the actor. So yeah. like we said, it's quite hard for the physique. Physics. Right. And, uh, uh, so, uh, and I will go very uh, briefly to the story. What happened to, uh, in the story? Okay, um, actually this performance is called Zha uh, Xi Xue Ba, right? Uh, it is the opening ceremony for every uh, Tibetan drama performance. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Because at the, the um, okay, briefly speaking, it's, uh, um, it's talk about the story of uh, um, the son of a uh, snow mountain god that come down to the earthly uh, world and uh, celebrate the birth of a first uh, uh, Dalai monk. Okay, so uh, to go a little bit deeper, when you see they first start adding, okay, line up uh, here, right? They, uh, they uh, start in a line. That is, they get uh, the order from the pure mountain god that the first uh, Dalai, the first uh, uh, Tibetan monk, uh, holy monk, just uh, uh, just uh, born on the earth world. So they sent this uh, uh, pure snow mountain god son to the world. And uh, then you see them popping up and down, popping up and down. That means <laughs> they... You're doing a great job, Billy. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been translated for many times, so... No, so. I mean the dance. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> anyway, so that, that is the part that they went over many, many big mountains. Mm. Uh, from the heaven, uh, the peak of the snow mountain, to the earthly world. That's the second part of the story, what they're doing. And uh, then, you see everybody lays up with uh, the... Uh, Leader actors who are ma 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 ma. Okay, actually that's the um, Buddhist script uh, writing and writing the book. So that means uh, um, we are the son of the pure snow mountain god, and uh, we are here to tell you, you are. Uh, Sacred monk, the first sacred monk is coming to your earthly world. You have to listen to it. So everybody is uh, singing, everybody is uh, uh, have this Tibetan script to read. So that's what the actors were murmuring just now. Yeah, yeah. okay. And then, since the message is spread, they become filthy dancing around. And uh, okay, may I invite one of our actors come to here to uh, have a little bit more elaboration? Sure, sure. I would like to invite both of them who are sitting there right now. Okay. To take a look at their. tell us your names. Okay, welcome you both to the show. So, Billy, you were talking about their costumes, right? Yeah, the costumes. Look, what's this? Uh, it's made of uh, yak fat. And uh, some of them are black, some of them are white. The white ones are like, uh, are, represent, are represent the snow from the pure uh, holy mountain. So why they have to dance around and uh, jumping up and down? Mm. It's uh, like a mimic, the slow flying. Okay, the snowflakes <laughs> flying yeah, around the you. The snowflakes fly, uh, fly, fly around you. Uh, actually, <clears throat> like the color uh, they're wearing, this, you see this kind of color only in the monk temp. So that represents they are uh, like uh, they uh, they have a relationship or they um, they are connected to the sacred temples, wow. monastery, right? Monasteries, um, yes, monasteries. yes, Sorry, yes, of course. And, uh, uh, the golden uh, the golden color represents uh, wisdom, wisdom, like we said just yeah, now. wisdom. And uh, uh, this uh, is not really it's not represent hell. It's uh, uh, it's the, like uh, the feather of the snow god. It's not like you're getting too old, so you're getting white hair. Right. It's not like that. Right. Okay. It represents snow. Yes. Yeah, yes, it represents I get it. the snow god. So that's a, uh, uh, and uh, look at uh, the symbol here. Everyone except the wear this, uh, uh, mm, mm, this clothes, they also have a little jacket. Mm -hmm. And uh, this jacket have these, uh, uh, like, uh, Buddhist symbols, represent uh, they are passing on the sacred magic of the Buddha. Right, right. So these are uh, Buddhism symbols, patterns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, well, uh, modified. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, of course. Absolutely brilliant, Billy. Um, can we get ready for the second scene? It's already no problem. nine minutes past okay. three. <laughs> We're running longer than we should, but okay. this is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. The teacher explanation of the castle and the story is what the time was for. Right. I hope your attention was painful. Right. Okay. So, are we ready for a second scene? Can we start the second part? Okay. Okay.
Okay, so because we're running out of time for our show, we're gonna have to stop the show, stop the performance right now a little bit, but we do wanna talk to the actors and actresses. First, tell us a little bit what were, make sense of all of this for me because it's all sang in Tibetan and I can't understand a single word, of course. What's the story that we're just seeing right now? We said it's called, it's a performance called Suki Nima, but what's the storyline we're seeing here? I will use three sentences that we brief to introduce it. So basically, it's the story of a goddess, and uh, it's the king who married goddess, but uh, be jealous by the queen. And uh, finally, uh, everyone have a happy ending because uh, the queen and the king believe that the goddess they believe the Tibetan Buddhism. Three sentences, short and simple. And 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 the Tibetan goddess being Sukinima, our protagonist, the heroine of the show, of course. Yeah who is a beautiful girl set to be given birth by a deer yep. after having drinking magic water from a magic spring. Yeah. Right, right. So that's basically the storyline. Um, and she became the concubine of the king, and the queen hates her and tried to persecute her, tried, yes, to, yes. tried to send her into exile. And then eventually, of course, and she embodies wisdom, kindness, and love, and eventually all of that triumph. So that's basically the storyline that we're seeing right now. And uh, can we just ask the actors to be seated right now? Because- uh, Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, and uh, since previous we have talked about uh, the story could last for three whole days, that, and each day is eight hours. That's still so unbelievable. Just see the ice peak uh, of uh, the whole show. Yes, yes, because that was a um, what a three five minute yeah. scene from yeah. the whole show. Yeah. So tip of the iceberg once again. Uh,演员们，大家可以坐下休息一下。we haven't seen our main character yeah. yet <laughs> just now, and we are already running now out, out of time for this live stream. But Billy, I do want to bring up a point that you talked about earlier in this show, that all the male characters in Lamo, in Tibetan opera, are actually portrayed by male characters. So we're seeing some of them right here. And uh, uh, yes, we're going to give the main character, so this, this would be our main character here. Yes, and we're, once we end the show, we're going to have a little, um, a little snippet of this performance uh, by our main character. Is that right? Okay. Right, and so I, I do want to introduce um, the, the third actor here in this row, because I did talk to him earlier in the makeup room, and he speaks a little bit Mandarin, so it's easier for us to communicate this way. Yes, so welcome to the show. Thank you. So basically, we talked about all the female characters are portrayed by male actors, and, and he's one of them, of course. So How does it feel to portray a, a female role? He's a very comfortable. <laughs> so he said it's, uh, it, it feels comfortable for him to portray a female character but it takes quite hard practice because the voice of a female is usually sharper. So every morning he would get up very early and practice next to a river. It's very difficult to learn that. Can you show it to us? How sharp of a voice do you need? Sure. <coughs>
So he's been practicing for five to six years. And Billy, I saw just now while the actors were singing, you had your eyes closed and you just completely soaked into the music. How, how does it feel for you listening to sound like that? Ha, it's for everybody in this room who knows Tibetan. It's like. Uh, the ancient voice from the high, pure snow mountain. We are, um, we are hearing the God, we are calling her blessed, and uh, he's always in our heart, our voice. So when the voice is coming up, everyone just goes in it. Right, and, and, and can I just ask, what was the song that you just sang? What was the meaning of the song? This is a blessing. Is it also part of the uh, 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 it, it, go, it goes, if I understand correctly, because... So this is the voice coach, female voice coach. Can you understand Mandarin? He, he, no, he doesn't really speak Mandarin. Uh, so you're going to help me translate. He, he has the best voice. Uh, uh, how, how do you practice? We're having a little bit of a communication issue right now. We're mixing how many three different types of languages here? <laughs> the more the merrier. Join the show. So, so, How do you practice it? You have to be next to a river. Why Okay, so you have to be next to a river because um, the, the, the sound of the water is very loud, so then you have to raise your voice. Wow. Uh, Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. 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 So he's, he's not very satisfied with his performance just now, and he wants to do it again. Uh, did, uh, okay, caught a little cold, right? Okay. Okay. No, he wants to do it again. He wants to do it again. Yes. He wants to prove is vibrating with the sound of it, with the vibration of his vocal cord. Okay, so once again, what you just heard is a little snippet from the show Suki Nima, which is one of the eight traditional Lamo Tibetan operas in the traditional Tibetan opera repertoire. And uh, we're seeing the Jawa uh, Tibetan opera troupe here in Li Tang County, located in southwest China's Sichuan province. And uh, we're running out of time for this live stream, but this is our protagonist, the heroine of the show, and we do want to give them a chance to hit the stage right now. So why don't we ask the actors to hit the stage and we're gonna end the show with the third snippet, third scene from the show.